I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. His name is called the Word of God. The armies which were in heaven followed him on white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Out of their mouth goes a sharp sword that with it they should smite the nations and they will rule with the rod of iron. He treads, they tread the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God. And he had on his vesture, on his thigh, a name written, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. The Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance upon them that know not God, that obey not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with an everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints, and to be admired in them that believe, because the testimony among you was believed in that day. So we find ourselves in the apocalypse. And how do we prepare? What do we do? Um, guys, we're going to have a little sit down. You can see um, we have some things here. Guys, in the last days, you know, when Christ comes back, he's coming back for people that are exhibiting faith. He said, when the Son of Man comes back, will he find faith on the earth? So, guys, when I learned about the apocalypse, when I learned about many of the things that I was teaching you throughout the years on this channel, um, it became apparent to me that I had to become a disciple. I had to learn what, the, what Christ said about being a disciple and do what he said. So, I stopped everything I was doing. Uh, many of the things I was doing just fell away. I lost everything. I lost my business, you know. I lost everything. And so it said, you know, I said, well, it's given me this time. I'm just going to pray. I'm going to study. I'm going to just worship all day. And that's what I did. That was back in 2012. And at that time, I had a... Um, I was renting an apartment and I had a house that had two two bedroom units that I was renting. Long story short, that house, um, I never paid a mortgage in four years and I collected the, um, the rent from that house, about, I think it was like $2,000 a month and I lived off that for four years. When I finished, I sold the house. I had all my debts forgiven, all of them, in the year of Jubilee. So all the things that are in the things that I'm teaching you, I'm doing, okay? So you can say what you want about this channel, uh, but, you know, Christ told us how to overcome the beast, guys. Sell all you have, give to, your, give to the poor, take up your cross, and follow me. Then you will have treasures in heaven. So that's what I did, okay? So... The fact of the matter is, if you're still working for the beast and you're criticizing my life, it's, I'm just going to laugh at you because, you know, you're still in it. We've got to overcome the beast. And, of course, Christ did that for us. But just because you're a believer, it doesn't mean you're a disciple. So I realized, okay, i got to be a disciple. What is that? A disciple is like the military. Okay, now this video, you can see we got our backpack, we got our our stuff for the great army this is part of our playlist on the great army and i want to walk you through some of these things that you can see here what is it what does it mean this is about being a disciple we can see that when christ told his disciples okay go you know take no money you know go with the staff 
just go with with the the shirt on your back and the shoes on your feet with this that's it don't store anything don't prepare anything so guys in the last days when we're in the apocalypse and the judgments come okay if god is judging you you can't prepare for it you know you can see the nations of the world trying to prepare and do stuff hide themselves you can't if god is judging you you're going to be judged okay so what is he judging you for why are we in this time of judgment we're in this time of judgment because of our, our idols so when he says okay you got to be a disciple you got to enter the military when you enter the military you don't take care of yourself you don't like okay unless you're in the reserve military of course but Basically, if you go full time, you go to boot camp, you go to do all that, you're not like, oh, I got to work. I got to, you know, pay my bills. Well, no, you go into the military. They take care of everything. So that's what a disciple is. So the, the disciplines that Jesus Christ taught his disciples is just like the military. OK, and that's what I'm going to talk to you about in this video, because it's look, if you want to prepare and do, you know, um, you know, rationing, all that stuff, that's fine. There's lots of channels you can go there. But what if God is judging you? Okay, what are you, what are you gonna do if you get the virus? What do you, you know, what? You gotta ask yourself some questions, okay? Why are you here? You thought you were raptured, but you're not. You're in the tribulation, okay? So when I realized, I, okay, the tribulation's coming, this is it. I said, I better just forget everything. Forget everything, any worldly plan I thought, I'm gonna just seek him and, and, and follow him, okay? And so I did that. So after I sold my house, I sold my house and that was it. I had no income and I was like, okay, good. Now I can believe God. <laughs> and that's what I showed you that video. All the alls I had was $40 and I laid that on the table and I said, Yeshua, I believe in you. Okay. Someone saw that and said, Hey, Leland, come to South Africa. And I've now been through 17 countries in three and a half years. So don't tell me faith doesn't work. Don't tell me you can't do this. So guys, when I tell you all this stuff about discipleship, the first thing you say, I can't do this. Don't say that. Don't say you can't do this. Don't say you can't be a disciple. Okay. Say, I don't know how. Okay. I didn't know how either. I never knew anybody that was like me. That was like, unless they are some type of ministry or missionary, I never saw anybody just live by faith hearing from God on their own, following Christ. I never, I never heard that. And I've been in the, the church since 1990, okay? I never saw anybody just living as a believer on their own without, you know, some type of religious system they are connected to. So I was like, well, I'll just do this and we'll see what happens. You know, I didn't know. Well, now I'm showing you the things I have learned over these, you know, whatever, eight years and I'm showing you actual practical things as well now you may not do anything I say that's okay but I'm still gonna share it with you because it's a teaching principle so when Christ told his disciples he said go okay go with the staff in your hand okay he said he said uh, gird your loins what girding your loins is it's a belt okay so you gird your loins you have a belt and he says in your in your money bag and I made a money bag, actually made it out of this. I cut the um, pieces off. I made a little thing to, uh, because it's empty. You have no, he says, take no money in your money bag, okay, in your wallet. So it's like, all right, well, if that's it, I, he just says, go, go where he says, and that's it. And that's how I live, guys. I have precise instructions of where I'm supposed to go, what I'm supposed to do, okay? And so what you have to do is you have to learn to hear his voice. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He makes disciples the same way he said. So if you want to learn about disciples, read everything he said. Matthew 10, Luke 10, read those chapters. That's how to be a disciple. And other places too. So he says, okay, take no money. I was like, all right, well, there's times he told me. I'd be in a country, um, I have no money, and... Uh, you know, I don't know what to do. You know, when you travel a lot, I travel full time. You can only usually be in a country about three months and then, you know. But I was in Ethiopia. I had no money. I couldn't even afford to leave. Okay. And they made a new law that allowed United States, you could get a, um, a tourist visa for one year. Actually, two years. I think it was two years. 
I was like, that's amazing. So I got that and I'm like, okay, good. Now I have no money. I'm in Ethiopia. And the Most High said, okay, take your staff. Go where I tell you, go to this mountain and pray. I was like, all right. Um, so I did that. And people started hearing my story like, hey, there's this guy, he's just, he's got no money. He's just said he's supposed to, and the people started helping me. Now you can see I'm in this place in the mountains, okay? And guys, this type of thing happens all the time where someone hosts me, hear about the story. Okay, we got this guy, you know, he's, he's uh, you know, teaching end time stuff and, you know, he has no money. Can, can you help us? Yeah. Oh, okay. It happens all the time. Uh, you'll see it in many of the videos. Now, I could give you many miracles about different things. Like, for example, I'm staying in this place. The uh, person has a house for sale. It's a cabin in the mountains. And it's been on sale for four years, never sold. Then I stay here two months. Now the house is sold on the precise day I need to leave. So this type of thing happens when you, when you follow the Most High. He'll always provide for you. So remember what he said, when you're in the military, take no thought for your life, what you will eat, okay? What you will be clothed, okay? Now that's easy if you have all the money in the bank and you worked hard and you, okay, that's fine. But what if you have nothing? Well, it's like, oh, how does this work? Okay, that's the best, best place to be, guys. Best place, no question. When I, when I came up to this mountain, I came up to this place, he told me, I think it's Isaiah 26, shut the doors, okay? Close yourself in your chamber. And that's what I did. Um, I said, okay. And let the judgment pass. Well, that, in the time I did, it's, I quarantined. Essentially, you know, I said, okay, well, I'll do that. And I'm going to catch up on some study, update some videos. And so um, in the time I did that, coronavirus breaks out. Crazy. So anyway, what I'm trying to get at is he'll provide everything. Another note on coronavirus. And this is why I don't prep. Okay. I live with the least amount of things I can exist. All right. Now, this is not all my luggage. I have a, more luggage. I have more stuff that you can see in the videos and everything. But what I'm getting at is I can't prepare because I live with whatever I could carry on my back. However, when you look at this thing and you want to prepare, you want to prep, you know, you can find some things about coronavirus, what you should do. You should eat some citrus, you can, you know, and I watched this video and they mentioned some things and I was like, they're all here. I mean, I can't even go to a store if I want to. It's not a store here. There's nothing. I'm in the mountains. And sure enough, I look around, they said, okay, you need to you need to eat lemons. And there's a lemon tree outside. I showed you the lemon tree with the tree of life. There's a lemon tree. They said, okay, you should eat, um, you should have oregano. There's oregano growing outside, you know? Um, they mentioned some other things. They mentioned like ginger. And I have the tea I got was ginger. Everything that they said, not everything, most of what they said in terms of recommendations for the virus, I already had, okay? And I'm not very, good guys at eating healthy or cooking or any of that stuff. All I can do is just trust him. And what I'm trying to tell you is if you trust him, he will never fail you. Okay. You're, you, you freak out. Oh, how do I do this? How do you? Guys, just relax. Take no thought for your life. Okay. Begin to learn where, wherever you are. So Eli, I can't do that because of this. He said, look, your family, your family be the biggest enemies, okay? He says, okay, if you consider your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your children, you know, you cannot be my disciple. That's what he said, okay? This is the type of thing I, why? Because the devil is going to manifest through all those people and oppose you, okay? Because you were, you were with the devil before, you know, sure, you had your little Christian facade going, but you were cool with that person. Everything was fine. Then all of a sudden you go to God and they're like, Psh. now, and, and the, look, the, the enemy can pull the strings very easily on weak people. OK, and that's why Christ talk about the family being in your household, being your biggest enemy. OK, so that's just what you're going to have to deal with. Now, um, the things that I have here, OK, came about through learning to go into captivity. So what I learned is, okay, in my walk person, I'm just sharing my story, guys. You can do whatever you want. I'm just sharing my story. I'm sharing what works. I'm just sharing this is all real. This is stuff I live by. This isn't just, okay, 
I'm talking about this and then I work a job, I got a business. Guys, I don't make any money on YouTube. I've never earned one penny on YouTube, ever, okay? So I'm just trying to tell you all this stuff that when you get instructed the most high, he's got to provide, you're in the military, you're in the army, okay? If you're on boot camp, you don't, everything is, the meals show up, okay? So, um, so I began to realize that the things he was taking me through were in the book of Ezekiel. So how this works is I will get instructions for something, okay? And many times I'll post this, I'll post this on the channel. For example, um, where is it, we here? Yeah, Ezekiel chapter 12, it says, um, Son of man, prepare your stuff or your your backpack for removing, removing in the day. Prepare your backpack in the sight of them, okay, um, that they may consider though they be a rebellious house. So that's what I'm doing. I'm actually showing you all these things. And for all the wicked and my enemies in the apostate church, I'm testifying against you because this is, this is going to go down. Just like all these, these guys, they warn the people, look, Babylon's coming. Okay, I'm doing the same thing. I'm warning you. You're in the tribulation. You know, the, the, you know, this stuff is going down. You're going to have to get the victory. You're not just out of here without having to overcome. Okay, and that's what it says. The kingdom of heaven suffers much violence. The violence, the violent take it by force. Okay, this is the type of uh, drastic measures you need to take. Okay, so I began to learn about this backpack. This backpack I wore in front of the people back when I was living in an RV. Okay, I did this video, I read the everything I just showed you. In this chapter, it talks about eating uh, food of affliction and all this. And I, and I did this. I did this in front of the people. I said, you know, you said do it. Okay, I did it. So this backpack now has been 17 countries. Okay, and you'll see quite often me in the woods. And I'm out in the woods, guys. I'm living in the woods. Okay, and it's the happiest place you'll find me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, that was the first one, okay? And then it, what it says later, it says, dig in, dig in the wall. So guys, I do these things. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just obeying my instructions. Next thing I know, I end up in Jerusalem. I end up going underground by the Western Wall, and I see the synagogue. I'm like, oh my goodness, this is what this backpack was all those years ago. Despise not the day of small things. That's the thing I want you to understand, guys. Okay, so um, many things that, that Christ said you can read in Matthew 10, Luke 10. It talks about the staff, okay. It talks about the, the uh, wallet, okay. Girding your loins, your garment, okay. And then I also learned that Ezekiel had many of these things, and it's like boot camp. Now, you know you go into boot camp, you, you go to your least denominator okay you got your backpack right you got your stuff you 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 know you march you run you you, you set up camp you you know whatever that's the basics of boot camp okay so I was taken through this boot camp I was taken through this process um, I first learned about it when I um, when I was in a, in the States I was on the Appalachia Trail and I saw these people hiking and they were hiking from like Georgia to Maine it's the Appalachian Trail I didn't really know much about it and I was like I was looking at these people, these women in their 50s, they lost so much weight, their skin is just waving back and forth like this. I was like, who are these people? You people are crazy. What are you doing? And I was like, how does this work? You know, how do you just, you know, take everything you live with on your back and just walk, you know, all the way through the south to the north of, you know, uh, of the east coast of America? I was astonished by this, and I was like... I'm not going to do all that walking just to walk, but I was like, how does that work? Tell me, you know, what do you do? And so I began to learn about certain things and I've gone through several stages of it. And that's what I'm kind of sharing with you here. So the first thing is, you know, Ezekiel you got you have your pack. Now I, I am only a three, sir, three season, um, backpacker. Okay. So once it comes to freezing temperatures, I'm not in a situation for that. Okay. Uh, that's why the most High provided me this cabin because um, I'm just not uh, prepared for that. So, um, but this backpack, you know, you can see it. You know, I'm, this is, I'll live out of this whole thing. I'll pack this whole thing, live with everything, 
And now I'll even include my guitar, my guitar. My guitar will fit in. I don't have it in right now because I want to show you as part of the demonstration of everything I'm talking about. But I'll have that in here. I'll have enough food. I'll have clothes, I'll have my tent, I'll have my sleeping belt, I'll have everything in this. And I carry on my back everything for different periods of time. Um, I've done as much as six days, okay? And I'll do different things, I'll forage in the forest, whatever. And I love it. You'll never find me so happy. <laughs> when I shut off all the devices and I walk into the forest and I get away from the people, it's amazing. So. I began to learn that Ezekiel had many of these things. See Ezekiel 12, he had the backpack, okay? And then um, he also, in, in Ezekiel, now guys, I've done all this stuff, okay? I have videos on all this. I have, a, I have a playlist on the book of Ezekiel and you can skim through it and you can see some of the things that I'm talking about here. Because, you know, how does this work? How do we answer the Lord of Hosts army? How do we go through these different disciplines? Well, I believe Ezekiel was kind of taken through like a boot camp because many of the things that he was asked to do is things you see in boot camp. So in Ezekiel chapter 4, he says, Moreover, take to you an iron pot and set it for a wall of iron between you and the city and set your face against it and besiege the city. Okay? So, so then I began to learn about, okay, an iron pot, you know, and I had different pots. And then this one is amazing because you can... You can kind of do everything. You can cook a cup of cup coffee, pour it in here. Um, you can fit your water bottle inside. Now, everything I'm doing, guys, is also practical. These are things I've learned. So this uh, fits here in the pack. So um, anyway, I began to see that Ezekiel had this pot. And guys, when when sometimes when you have these things, you think about like, I think about like the prophetic meaning of everything. Okay, what does this mean? And I began to just see, just think about Christ like, you know, some things that he said, like, give us this day our daily bread. And he said, to he who overcomes, I'll give the hidden manna. What was the hidden manna in? It was in a pot, okay? And the hidden and the pot was placed in the Ark of the Covenant. And so sometimes something as simple as this is, like, amazing. It's amazing because there's always food. Guys, I always eat, okay? There's always food in this pot. You know, it's just like the military. You always have your portion okay so I take this pot I cook it and I'm just like it just works it's just real okay and so I trust him whatever he says I do so that's the pot so Ezekiel had this pot he had this backpack okay and then uh, actually I don't know the verse off front of me but he um, in one of the prophecies Ezekiel he said I will be to them a little sanctuary I was like well, that's the tent. <laughs> that's the tabernacle, okay? And so if you look right here, you can see in my pack, this bag right here, this holds my tent and my sleeping bag is all in here. Now, this is a, a nice backpacker's tent. It's, uh, it's an expensive one. I forget, it's like, I don't know, $600 or something like that. It's very light. It's uh, compact, so that is my tabernacle. And guys, all of this is to remind us that our lives are temporary on this earth, okay? You know, when, when you do this, when you live off what you carry on your back, you're reminded of how short life is, okay? Sure, if you want to build some kind of kingdom down here, you make your plans, whatever. But that's what I'm saying. The apocalypse is going to destroy all those plans of the people, all of them, okay? And we're gonna be reduced lower and lower and lower to our most basic, least common denominator necessities. That's what the apocalypse is, why? Because all those things that we've done on the earth and we've created idols, created idols in our heart. We haven't loved him, we haven't trusted him, okay? We haven't done, obeyed his commandments. So because of that, we get judgments, we get plagues, okay? And that's what's going on. Okay, so when we get these judgments, we get these plagues. Remember what it said. Um, if he sends the locusts, he sends the pestilence, he sends the plague. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will heal 
their land. Okay, so that's what we're saying. We have to seek him. We have to say, okay, we got locusts, we got plagues, we got, we're in the apocalypse. What do we do? Yes, we do Psalm 91, okay? But guys, the problem is idols. The problem is you, you, have, to, you have to admit the fact that you have idols. You have to, you gotta tell God you're sorry for being selfish, okay? You gotta tell God you're sorry that you find yourself in this time and you had no clue what was going on, okay? You gotta tell God sorry, you gotta change, okay? That's what repent means, you gotta change. It's like, well, whatever I was doing, that wasn't, that wasn't it. So what is it? So you gotta follow him. I'm just giving you examples of the boot camp, okay? I'm telling you about the army. I'm telling you about this stuff. Who is telling you this? Okay, sure, we got the whole wall armor guide. You know, how does that work? I'm showing you the actual basic necessities of stuff you can actually do, all right? So that's our tent. And I show you this as Moses Tabernacle. And a whole example, I'll show you. Guys, what I want to um, show you is um, things like this where we're actually doing Moses' Tabernacle and how to use this to walk by faith, how to use Moses' tabernacle to come before his throne, to come before the Lord. Okay guys, uh, here is my backpacking Moses' tabernacle. You can see my backpack over there, and everything you see here is, um, with maybe exception of a couple things, everything I take with me when I go backpacking in the wilderness. And when I do, I think about Moses' tabernacle. I think about the stations of the tabernacle and, you know, what, what it is you're doing. How, you know, God provides for your needs. You know? Now, as you come, the first thing you have is you have an altar. Now, this is my little camping stove. <laughs> and we're going to show you these in the replica in Israel when they uh, did Moses' tabernacle. So the first thing you have is the altar and... We know that we are to offer ourselves a living sacrifice. Okay? And then we have the water. And he is the living water. Okay? And, um, and, and praise to his glorious name, I've been able to drink living water in a many of the amazing places in the promised land. The water, that we would wash the water, but we also drink the water. We drink of the living water. Now, and we have our table of showbread. And he is the manna from heaven. Okay? So that's, this is our table of um, children. Then... And here is our incense altar. And our menorah. Ezekiel 11, verse 16. I will be to them a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, even I will gather them from the people, ascend them out of the countries where they've been scattered and I will bring them to the land of Israel. And I'll give them one heart, and I'll give them my new spirit within them, and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh, and I'll give them a new heart. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God. Uh, and they will no longer walk after their heart of their detestable things and abominations, and I will recompense their way upon their own heads, says the Lord. So that's, a, that's our little sanctuary. Of course, we are the temple, but then it's talking about changing the heart, changing the, the heart of the people. So um, uh, next, let's see. I want to mention this quickly. I don't want to make a long video, but, uh, but you can also see, guys, that it's so important. Worship is so important. And you can see, even with the small amount of space and things I got. This is just a small backpack. This is just a summer backpack. But even with the small amount, of, I still make room for my instrument. And I want to just read um, what it says, Ezekiel uh, chapter 33. Um, and he says, Oh, son of man, the children of the people still are talking against you by the walls and in the doors of the houses. Speak one to another and everyone to his brother saying, Come, I pray you. Hear what is the word that comes from the Lord. And they come unto you as a people come, and they sit before you as my people. They hear your words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth 
they show much love, but their heart goes after covetousness. This is, I know this is how you guys are, so, you know. And lo, though you are with them a very lovely song, as one that has a pleasant voice that can play well on an instrument. So the people say, oh, Leland, your message, oh, you're anointed, but you won't do what I say. For they will hear your words, but they do them not. And when this comes to pass, lo, they will know that a prophet has been among them. So that's why we got the worship, the pleasant voice, we got the worship, the kitara. Okay, in the house of David, you got to have the instrument. And that's why it may seem silly, guys. You might think, oh, it's just a little uh, ukulele-like guitar. But guys, David slew the bear. David, David slew the, the lion. So David learned the war, the military, okay, by being out in the field with the sheep, right? And then he became the great king. So despise not the day of small things, guys. Create, you know, music, worship. I encourage you to get that uh, harp. Um, some of you got that harp, and it's, like, amazing. Now, this is the one, this is the instrument that, you know, I'm instructed to have. In fact, even if you look, I don't know if you can see closely, you can see this. See how that forms Noah's Ark? Okay. And then you can see here the lilies. Okay, the lily of the valley. And if you look closely here, you can see the symbol of Alpha and Omega. So that, I didn't know any of that, but then with this instrument, and I was like, wow, this is the kitara. This is amazing. Um, it's got the Garden of Eden, Noah's Ark, Alpha and Omega. Wow, wow, wow. So uh, anyway, that's also the instrument. So all these things are things that uh, go into my pack, go into uh, the small amount of space I have to go into the forest, and they have meaning to them. The belt, okay? Take no money. Um, if you can, take your staff. Sometimes I take a staff, but they, they take it away on the airplane. But um, then the tent. So guys, I just wanted to tell you about these things. Um, oh, also I forgot about the water, um, the water vessel. Ezekiel talks about the water vessel and the tent peg in Ezekiel 15, verse 3. And so this goes in, and this can carry like two, a little over two liters. So all of these things are really important because when you have to carry on your back and walk with just what you, you only carry what you need because the more you carry, the slower you are, the, the less distance you can cover because you're carrying lots of weight. So you want to reduce it down, reduce it down. So I've reduced it down, and, you know, uh, I'll show a couple... Uh, clips when I uh, did this in um, South Africa, in South Africa, and you know I've done this anywhere I can. The developed countries, some of the poor countries, it's pretty hard to to uh, backpack. But guys, this is part of our uh, Great Army playlist. This is boot camp. Okay, if you are interested in these things, I'll put links to uh, some of these things. You can get them, and. You know, when, they, when, when preppers talk about a bug out bag, okay, that's a way of looking at this. And look, I encourage you to do this. Who knows at what point you're just gonna have to up and go within minutes, okay? Within minutes, you gotta just up and go, carry the shirt on your back and get out. You may not even get a car, okay? Just get out. What if you have to just walk? Well, if you got this ready, you got this ready, you got this all set up, you can just grab this and go, okay? Um, it's looking like that's the way things are coming, you know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm saying do, do something like this, think about this, practice it, you know? Um, if you say, no, I can't do that, or, you know, I don't want to go in the woods by myself, I'm a woman, okay, fine. You know, find someone else that'll do it with you. You know, learn, learn about these things. Uh, get away from it all. You know what I'm saying? Get out of the city. Get out. Get out. You know, get get to where you can hear His voice, guys. That's the main thing with all this. Um, if you if you don't know how to hear His voice, how are you going to get any instructions? How are you going to understand what your orders are? So that, that's why I, I say so much. You know, uh, 
have the coffee with him in the morning. You know, set a cup uh, for him, set a cup for you. Learn to hear his voice, okay? Speak to him. He'll speak back to you, okay? He'll tell you things. And when you hear his voice, then uh, you can begin to be entrusted with instructions. What will you, okay, go here, do this, you know, whatever. Um, which is the hope, okay? That's the hope that you will follow him. Otherwise, it could just be you're in constant drama and need to be bailed out and um, stuff like that, which is fine. You know, we got to get, like Lot was in Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, he couldn't, he said, oh, this is a beautiful land, but it was Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, so you guys are in Sodom and Gomorrah. You guys are in America. You're like, you know, you know, you got to get out of, you know. Look, and I'm not saying that there's any country or anything. It's not about that. But I'm trying to say it now, you know, you, you're going to have to just, you know, run by the skin of your teeth based on these things that are happening. You can see that travel's being shut down. It's going it, to, this is just the beginning, guys. This is going to get worse, okay? So the only thing we can do is get our instructions, obey them, and, you know, things like this. I love it. I love this stuff. <laughs> All these things I carry on my back and walk wherever I go, they mean something to me. This is the man and he's faithful, guys. How can I do this? <laughs> How can I do this message, you know, if he's not faithful, if he doesn't take care of me? What am I going to do, you know? Uh, try to, you know, squeeze money out of people or whatever? No. This is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to encourage you to do the same. So as we conclude, I just want to say this. Don't say, I can't do that. I can't be a disciple. I can't sell. Don't say that. Don't say that. Say, okay, I just don't know how. That's fine. I went through a progress. I went, okay, I lived in a house. From a house, I went to an apartment. Apartment, I went to an RV. An RV, I have a military bag in this. This is it. And I've been like this for three and a half years. So um, just say yes. Okay, just say yes, but say, what do I do? How do I do this? How does this work? And you, 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 you know, I can't tell every single one of you every little step. I'm just telling you the basic thing. This is basic boot camp, okay? To hear his voice, okay? Because remember what he said to Elijah in the cave. The Lord was not in the earthquake. The Lord was not in the wind. The Lord was not in all those judgments. He was in a still, small voice. And you've got to hear the still, small voice. We're in critical, critical times, okay? So that's why I want to do this video. I want to show you some, you know, kind of practical things. I want to share with you a little bit. Um, I could share with you testimonies all the time, guys, okay? But it's not about that. It's not about us. It's about him. Okay, he's the king, he's coming. And like he said, will he find faith on the earth? So I'll have a link to you know, some of these things. I'll have um, links in the scripture field for the Great Army playlist. Okay, we're gonna call this the boot camp. Okay, the basics, be a disciple. So guys, thanks for watching and God bless you.